It is interesting to see just how much IG are, are giving thought to those respect bands, though. Yeah, I think you could e you could still easily justify a first pick sniper, though, if that's the way you want to go. But oh, it will be the Phoenix. Good call. What do IG want here? Sniper. Uh, they want sniper. Or do they, they want to go for like the comfort zone Ferrari Shadow Fiend? If they pick the sniper, I feel they don't get the Shadow Fiend, too. which. I mean, they, they lost with Sniper against Phoenix. I wonder how much that's going to get in their head. And they say, look, Sniper's a good pick. Coming into this tournament, yes, we would have picked Sniper here, but maybe with how the series and how this tournament's gone, you pick the Shadow Fiend. I think they're going to grab the Lion as their second pick. That's going to be my guess. But which one they get first? If it, hmm. It's difficult so to do say. You Shadow Fiend or Shaker is the other option. It, I think Earthshaker or Lion are both very good. If they get the Earthshaker, we need to see a kind of aggressive support to go with, or at least a, a support with good presence How in the lane. How about the the Chen? It's something that they occasionally pick together with Shadow Fiend. It's a Chuan classic. I don't think it's, it's a nice night pick, but so is Lion. Yeah, I don't think you want Chen in the first two per se. Now, IG taking their time here, Lion. and they yeah. will go Lion. It's a good warrior. I don't think Cloud Nine will use extra time here. I think they're going to grab the sniper for me. They might have second thoughts because they did lose the last game with this exact combination, Phoenix and Sniper, but I still think Sniper has a really good matchup against Shadow Fiend. It's actually super annoying playing SF against it. A hero that's very... Yes, you've got the races as your um, as your primary damage source early on, but come mid-game, Shadow Fiend wants to be a little bit mobile and get in and get some attacks off. Sniper always outranges him, never really gets threatened by the Shadow Fiend. Whereas the Sniper has pretty big kill potential once you yeah. get the level 6 with the, the three shrapnel charges. IG are taking their... The their other option is the Batrider. Well, I don't think... If they, if they get Batrider, it already puts Phoenix into the support role and maybe reveals a bit too much, or... No, they're going back. All right, team fire. Well, IG will at least have some opportunity to try and react to this Batrider pick. It's actually team fire oh. versus team hell right now. <laughs> <laughs> team evil. <laughs> are you saying IG's the bad guys? Now, you guys were mentioning picking up a clear counter to the Batrider. Is this where IG want to be eyeing off something like a Vengeful Spirit or some kind of a actual Dis counter to initiate? Disruptor. We used to see Nyx a lot. He's been banned a couple of times this tournament, though. Seems more to protect squishy high damage heroes like Zeus. The other hero so far ignored has been the Wisp, which Cloud9 yeah. did not pick up in their opening two. Also can be a potential counter to the lasso, something Pilai Dai was doing a lot of back when he was on Cloud9. It's not really an IG hero, though. I don't think they Cloud9 want the Wisp with Phoenix as their support duo, though. Yeah, so that would have to be... I mean, they, can they run the the Fada Batrider and the Phoenix in the offline? If they want to mix it up. May just see Wisp get ignored this game, but... If they want to go a little bit unorthodox here, which the only reason I'm considering this is because it's IG, they still have Kunkka available. Um, mm. Not the best roaming partner with Lion. He's better together with Shadow Demon that with they, we saw them running it together. But actually, when it comes to countering out the Phoenix, there were some really nice places by Faith in that game. X marks the spot as a great counter to Icarus Dive. Kind of the same logic as Last Word where you cast the dive, but you know you're ultimately still going to go back where you started. Um, Ghost Ship is a decent counter to Batrider until the Force Staff. So it's like an, a little timing window where Batrider can blink Lasso. You just instantly ship when he pulls someone Without in. Without a setup, though, I mean, Lion to me is not really a good set for Kunkka. They no. only picked with the Shattered That's why I'm saying it's, it's unorthodox. It yeah. might be something they're considering, but I do not think it's the pick. But if all no. their other options get removed, we see the Venge removed now, it, it I think might I be what they end up with. I think they're going to go super... Vanilla and get like a jug, jug axe. Yeah. Jug axe. Like get Luo's axe. You need an initiate at this point with Ferrari on Shadow Feed. Get like a jug for burning, which has been probably one of his most played heroes. <laughs> yeah. Look, IG are going to go for what's worked leading up to this tournament. I, and I think it's going to be the axe fourth pick. It just seems IG playing it super safe with this route. Surprisingly, they banned Lycan. The, the Sleeve Sniper still out there, but at, that, at the same time, Lion Jug are pretty decent against Sniper if you're just able to close the gap. Especially since Lycan is not the most dominant laning hero. Like, that's almost a hero, like, if, I, if you were planning on picking an Axe, you're happy to have Axe against Lycan. All right, as for Cloud9, other big Envy heroes, yeah. uh, the Phantom Lancer, the Naga, they're out there. They don't have the Zeus, which really ties the Naga strat together nicely, though. Five seconds. Mm. And there's that Sniper possibility. But if they, if they want it... Do you like get Magnus plus an NB carry, like a Magnus PA here, because Magnus is probably Fata's best hero or like most played hero left still in the pool. Along with Puck, I guess. Yeah. Not really seen much play in this version. TA has a really good matchup against SF, though, so it's... I, 
it's I mean, still a possibility. It feels like they're just um, losing games with TA yeah. every time they go for it. Cause how, about, like, how about Morphling for Cloud9? Did they ever play that? Envy used to play it a lot. Yeah. Not so much. He hasn't played in a while. Oh, though. yeah, he, d he did, but I haven't seen it for weeks, I think, from the team. There. Yeah, probably longer uh, longer than that, even. A couple of months, at least. It does always come to mind when they take the AA or take deny it from IG. So it's like a classic trio, deny pick, though. 100% The bat AA yeah. Morphling. Um, the, it's one of Misery's good heroes, and getting that away from Faith now Don't might force him into... Me. So what, what options do we have for Faith, actually? The Venge is out. There's the Silencer that he played Don't earlier without much success that is available. Um... The Chen is still Kunka I mentioned really Chen, Chen could be pulled out and they can play Faith on Lion. Hmm. Hmm. I still, I still like the Axe. Lean is if they want like, uh, some more burst damage coming out. But I still really like the Axe here for IG. They don't have that great initiator. They definitely still need it. Clockwork's also in the pool if you want to go a bit different. Axe gets run over in lane by AA. Can walk off to the jungle. It's IG oh. who take the Morphling. Feels it like a, it may be a zero. bit of a block pick as well, but it's going to be a different style of Morphling. I yeah. think this should be the offlane Morphling. Yeah. Unless they want to do like a Vici gaming style offlane jug, but I mm. think I've seen Lua play the offlane Morphling before. and So that means Cloud9 probably going to ban the Skyrath, I would say, is the last, last hero here. They don't really have. Oh, yeah, Skyrath is there too. That's the, true. The Lion is the only real great follow up for the. Shadowfiend's solid as well, I That's think. That's true. He's decent. You know who's also good with Morphling Stun? Yep. Kunkka. Kunkka. Yeah! <laughs> there you go. That's actually a really good setup, to be honest. It's a good counter. It's, it's like, if, if back goes in with the Blink Lasso, get, just throw the boat out, and then get the Coco's Rum and all that. All right. Yeah, there, there's no, your factor you're here. Time, all time for IG to ban right a melee guys. carry. The Jug. <laughs> I, I wasn't right about the Axe, but the You've jug, called almost the everything the right, Magnus. You called the first pick Phoenix. You called the Shadow Fiend. The bat said lion or shaker, so you get half a point for that. You called bat rider. You called the, mag. The jug. You called jug. That's, there you go. that's really good. Did maybe he call, I, did maybe he call I'm the like justifying him, myself here. As, <laughs> uh, he he as actually an speaks analyst. Chinese, and he's got a, a direct line to, to IG right now. Yeah. <laughs> you get the the draft bingo. Stop, send you're, you're blowing up his ego. Yeah, it's, he's oh, going to be shucks. insufferable when we go back. <laughs> so, I mean, PA is the obvious pick to go with the Magnus. Do you think PA is good here? I mean, Omni Slash kind of bypasses the evasion and all that, but you're like, who, who are you empowering is always the big question. Yeah, PL is the ban here. Hmm. I always, like, the, the problem here for PA is until she gets BKB, she actually can't fight at all. Like, you, you can't initiate into a Lion Hex, you can't initiate into a Morphling with the stun. The burst da uh, spell damage on IG is actually overwhelming until you have that magic immunity. So I, I would think... If Cloud9 do it, they put themselves in a little bit more of a passive position as far as the early game goes, but Ooh. I might go for that. All right, that's one hero we didn't consider at all, actually. A more classic pick for Vici Gaming than for IG, but oh man, this I feel like we see it too little in general. Sanking is such a good hero, I think. If he gets space early, I feel like this, this IG mid-game just looks so hard to deal with. You've got Lion, Sanking, Morphling, all great initiators. A lot of follow-up damage from the Jug Shadow Fiend. But they do need a lot of levels on this team. It's a pretty resource-hungry bunch. Ten seconds, I'm thinking Spectre. That's, that's my call. Let's see if I can... Five Mask of Madness Spectre? <laughs> I don't know about Mask of Madness, but... <laughs> doesn't, I don't think it's like a great empower target, but I think it just fits this like, global gank. And, nope. Oh, close. <laughs> Terrorblade. Yeah. There we go. Still an impressive series of calls. This is a really hit or miss Terrorblade game. He's either going to get free farm and own, or he's just going to get completely shut down. Like, I'm, I'm talking like zero seven 7 or something like that. They picked Terrorblade into Lion, Sand King, <laughs> Shadow Fiend. Whew. All right, guys. That's some confidence. This is our deciding game three. Who is going to be facing Vici Gaming in the grand finals, and who's finishing third? Four I think yours. IG have the more standard safe draft, but I, I feel Cloud9 every game. They're dominating the early to mid game. They've got Phoenix again. Despite IG being safe and having an easier to execute draft, I, I think Cloud9 are going to take it. This time it's an AA support though instead of Disruptor. I think they have less catch until Batrider comes online. So if Batrider with Bone 7 gets shut down a little bit here, it's going to take Cloud9 longer. Like the, their early game is actually fairly weak until Batrider gets yeah. blink in terms of finding kills. So. Or the Magnus blink, but yeah. again, but that's what really uh, Either way, really we're looking at 10 minutes plus before Cloud9's lineup really comes online. So maybe IG get the levels they need on Sand King. Uh, I, I'm going to favor IG again. I think I favored them all three games for, from the draft, but Cloud9 keep impressing, so I, I'm not as confident as I would have been going into the series, but the IG. La the last time I saw Cloud9 play Magnus and Bat for Bone7 and Fada, they had both had blinks around the 10-minute mark, so yeah. I don't know. I feel like they're playing their A game, and 
I think they're going to get their blinks early and take the series. So with that, we'll see what our casters have to say. Zyra and Purge, take it away. All right, our final match of this best of three series. It all comes down to this Purge, a lot on the line. What are you thinking about these drafts? The first Terra Blade of the tournament. Yeah, I, I'm a little scared for your C9 here. I feel like I, I really like the banning path that IG took rather than maybe going for the ban the best hero in every category. They're like, we're going to ban all of Fada's mid heroes until he picks a mid hero. And then when he had a mid hero, they're like, all right, and then we're just going to ban all the best carries. They just target banned EE and Fada there. And I feel mm -hmm. like the, the scary thing about carries right now is that the best ones are Jug Troll and Sniper. And if you don't have one of those, we saw a couple games where they'd have a non-typical carry against one of those guys, and it was just a really uphill battle. So I'm really worried for Terrorblade. And to make things worse, he's against a Lion who can one-shot his illusions using Mana Drain or Hex. So going even in the late game, they're going to have an option to stop the Sieging. Plus, they have tons of AoE. They've got Sand King. They've got Lion Impale. They've got Shadow Fiend. Morphling's going to have a really long duration stun, which is going to hurt his Sunder. It's just and then plus the burst damage from the finger to make Sunder a lot more difficult to utilize. Yeah, I mean they have point as well. a lot of tools to really put pressure on this Terra Blade. Yeah. I mean, what do you think about Terra Blade in general right now? Not even just in the context of this game. Is he underpowered, overpowered? He doesn't seem to be getting a lot of love yeah. in the competitive scene right now. Luckily, I played him a week or two ago for the first time in forever, so I feel like he's still. Decent. He, I played him against the Juggernaut, and the Juggernaut that I played against had a lot more farm than me, so Omni Slash was still a really big issue. Even with a Manta style mm -hmm. and spawning Conjure Image, it can still get really scary because if Jug does have a gold advantage, he's still going to cleave through you and have a good shot at killing you before you get the Sunder off. So it's tough as a Terra Blade, but you can still farm extremely fast with a Quelling Blade. You send your illusions in the lane the last hit, you go to jungle, then you're pretty safe. Right. As long as IG is not being too aggressive, then you'll be safe. But I expect IG to be aggressive. If if he doesn't get a lot of advantage on Terra Blade, I think this is going to be a really tough game. So it's looking scary. Their team fight in the mid game is good, and he does also have Empower. That's mm -hmm. another thing to remember. But once he goes into range form, Empower doesn't cleave, so it gets a little worse. So yeah. a couple pings by E. He thinks the ward is in this position. They should be able to deward it. Do they have sentry money? And yes, sentries are flying out. E predicted the spot, so he knows at the maximum limit. Oh, he's making this casting so easy for me. He's like, I think <laughs> at maximum the ward is in this area. So they should probably place a sentry somewhere in a box like this and most likely find the observer ward. All right, and the offlane morph blink. Something else we haven't really seen too much this tournament, though. It's been the talk of the town over the past month or so with those big adaptive strikes, mm -hmm. how long that stun can be. and It's pretty potent. A little surprised we haven't seen more of it this tournament, actually. Yeah, I, I would call it obnoxious more than anything else. It's, it's good, but it's also <laughs> very obnoxious. They're going to be it going is. for the bot rune here. It basically stuns for up to 4.25 seconds on a 10-second cooldown, so a lot of cores are just going to have trouble yeah, with it. Huge uptime there. Icarus dive in, not quite going to be there. 4.30 will get the bottom bounty and top will go to Fata. So even exchange there in terms of the initial runes. Chuan will help block the mid lane and Misery will do the same here on the dire side. Nothing too surprising about this lane setup though. Everything about as you would expect. This is a boots game, man. We have 5 out of 10 boots wow. for this Dota game. Isn't that amazing? That has got to be the highest percentage of it. Interesting seen. to see Burning go boots first here. Um, it's, as I, it's good on drug. I think I said yesterday, he, he does it occasionally. It's sort of 50 50, not in every game kind of a deal, but when they think there's a chance where maybe a first blood can come out, uh, they'll definitely go for it. I think the reason they did it is because they have a slightly weaker second support on Sanking against a Batrider. So by grabbing Boots, it allows them to potentially get a kill on Bat by just using Lion and Jug. It gives a lot more threat than you normally get because if a Batrider has a little bit of free space here, he can just get a lot of advantage. Oh, look at what Morphling did. This is so smart. Yeah, he bought Boots first, didn't buy any Tangos, and he waveformed into the trees. They ping actually. They think they know where he is. They know he's got to be in this general area. I mean, We've there's got only so many blade. spots you can hide. This is how they find him. To still get XP. Every five seconds, your one piece closer. And they can look at his levels and say he's level two. Okay, he's definitely getting experience. Go find him. Mm -hmm. He still. doesn't have, or he does have waveform mana now. I was going to say, they could catch him without mana and kill him maybe. Yeah. Things going okay for Luo so far. Let's check in on to Bone 7 in the off lane for the Dire. Still only level 1, trying to leech some XP, but not really having an easy time either. And then in the mid lane, Magnus versus Shadow Fiend seems to be fairly even so far. Both Ferrari and Fata getting some decent CS. So Faith is fulfilling a pull here. And like you said, Barret is still not 2 yet. I thought Big Daddy was going to shift over and take a look for the Morphling, but they haven't found him yet, and this is really good for him. Another Quelling is used. They still have not found him. He knows exactly where they are, and he's ready to waveform and TP. Well, he doesn't have the mana for TP, actually. It's a little scary, but... Yeah, and this is one of the great things about the offlane Morphling is that you don't really need items. Once you get your Soul Ring, your Tranquils, you just need level 7, and then you have all the mana you need for your adaptive strikes. 
Bottom bounty will get picked up by Faith as Bone7 tries to snag it for himself. He's going to get spotted. There it is. They see him. Yep. Icarus dive across. Luo. He's, he's How does he TP. handle this? He'll just try to TP home. Will he make it? It'll wow. be a bit close, but he survives. Heads was, up play. Good reaction. That was a lot of damage, but he TP'd a little bit too early. He actually looked a little AFK, didn't he? Like, he dive did. came through. He's like, I'm not here. Don't look at me. I'm sure he was tabbed out checking Facebook. Yeah. He's almost level 3. That was actually a little bit not amaz as amazing as I thought it was. I thought he was going to get level 3, level 4, but almost hitting 3. Not bad, though, considering he didn't have to use any regen for that. Mm -hmm. All he lost was a TP scroll. That's a really good trade for him. Uh, on the other side, the supports have been able to do exactly whatever they want and uh, with as much secretiveness I mean, He's still finding wanted. a better offlane experience than Bone7, who's still only level 1 and now uh, roaming about in some different locations rather than trying to leech in the bottom lane. Respecting the boots first on board, uh, burning, especially with Lion off the map, could be could be anywhere. So It's kind of we'll cool how he uses Ward here. He, he didn't place it in the offlane to protect himself. Instead, he's like, you know what? I'm going to position it where it's going to help out the game. Um, and he's going to put it behind that. He's going for the courier. Right. Can they upgrade fast enough? It's going to be close. He's going to need three hits, though. There's the upgrade. Oh, wow. Very close call there. I thought he was going to get it. Nope. Would have been a huge pick to stop the bottle from 430. A noble effort. Yeah. And the aggressive ward could still come in handy later on and maybe help them find a kill in the mid lane. Luo rotating through the jungle, heads back to the river. Big Daddy knocks off the clarity and pushes him back. Yeah, Batrider's not exactly a good career sniper because he only does 40 damage on average. He's one of the worst base damage heroes in the game. And a regular courier has, like, what, 75 or something like that? Mm -hmm. I think he can so. still two-shot the regular courier. It was close. Yeah. Definitely close. But once it gets upgraded, yeah, there's no way. So the gank begins. A little bit of smoke. I, I like, kind of like how they're integrating Morphling into this a bit. He's actually a really good ganker at level 1. 100 damage for waveform plus an attack. Fata, level 5, will get Hex to have things started. Faith should be able to follow up with a stun. There's Luo. Fata will not live. It's 430. The draw's the first blood. Shadow Fiend, a prize target to get the bonus gold and, of course, max out your Necromastery. So the gank happens. No Tail's going to grab some experience on the mid lane, but a bad start for Fata here. Uh, he still has a lot of last hits, though. 18, very good for considering he's against a ranged hero. Fata notoriously just amazing at getting last hits in, in even heroes that are melee. He does a great job farming the mid lane. Both Burning and Envy getting good farm in the safe lane. Very comparable CS. Phase Boots, the first item of choice on the Jug. And what's Envy working on here? Just Brown Boots, Ring of Basilius, pulling up his gold for now. What do you think in terms of item builds here for the Terra Blade? What's ideal in this kind of a game? Usually you go agility stuff. Um, there's a chance to go for a Radiance build, but I don't expect to see that at all. It's most likely to be Manta and things like that. Mm -hmm. Manta style, Scotty, maybe a BKB. That's very, very standard. Maybe even a Sanjin Yasha is usually what you'll get. How about drums on Terra Blade? It's something you can get up. It's an early game advantage. Gives you a little bit more mana. The hero actually does use a lot of mana over the scope of the game, but you can kind of counteract that with just getting a bottle. I feel like it's better just to go Manta with bottle than to stop for the drums. But the movement okay. speed can be useful. And surely he'll upgrade that Aquila for a little bit of uh, extra mana regen. Likely, yeah. So, fairly quiet early game, aside from that first blood. Chuan went boots first, still pretty quiet on the Sand King. Has a, a couple of stacks that he can work on here in the jungle to begin that quest towards the Blink Dagger, but hasn't been able to do too much yet. Just maintaining lane control for burning, and he is just in free farm heaven here. Bone7's had to retreat to the jungle, and he's actually doing okay for himself also. Batrider, level 4, and making a lot of progress towards a blink. We're probably going to see Chuan just stomp the next seven minutes or so because he just hit level three. He's got this triple stack on the large camp and as well, Faith, since he's been spending a lot of time mid, look at the stack over on the other large camp. I don't know if he'll take it over Shadow Fiend. In a lot of cases, you'll let that go to the mid hero, but I feel like if Chuan gets an insanely fast blink dagger, which this would produce, it could do a lot in the early game. So I think it's going to, we'll have to see who it goes to. It's either going to go to Ferrari or the same king. Yeah. Only time will tell. IG looking to be a little more aggressive here. Ferrari actually with double runes right now. A haste as well as a double damage. This is scary at six minutes in the hands of a Shadow Fiend, who's already level seven. Haste rune gets popped, rotates in, finds Envy, starts lobbing in the auto attacks. Luo and Faith come around the other side. Raise on two. It's an easy set of kills for IG. Two for nil. What do you do against DDSF with a haste? Like you, you cry. They That's about like, all oh, you can do we, there. We have to hide, and they, they did tango a tree, but it didn't quite give them the, the juking path that they needed, and I don't even think it was going to matter. Like uh, Getting so. behind that tower, how do you how do you succeed past that? Uh, I mean, on the bright side, they ganked heroes instead of killing Bone7's camps because he very much was that threat to losing those, but he's getting spotted now by the Observer Ward, and 
they might very likely shift over here and stop him. We'll see. Faith will at least try and leech a little bit of XP, maybe snipe a few last hits. There's your Earth Spike to get some of that gold and take it out of the hands of Bone7. Looks like he'll still get most of it at yeah. least. He stole very little, other than the experience, which is significant. But if Bone7 waits 20 seconds, he'll grab the medium camps as well, and then he'll be in a decent spot. Yeah. But now the scales have been tipped a little bit, burning, starting to pull ahead of that of Eternal Envy, of course, uh, that death slowing him down. Burning still just completely uncontested on the Juggernaut. Now Aquila to go with his phase boots. He's in free farm heaven. I'm sure that Mask of Madness will be right around the corner. Mm -hmm. Faith getting decent XP also. Level 5 on Lion already. Finger of Death. That's from those neutrals, definitely. Mm -hmm. He got at least half a level from that, I'm sure. Uh, Tranquil Boots finished. He's in a great place. Like If you're at level 5 at 8 minutes on a support, you're pretty happy. Especially with all the movement he's done and all the stacking he's done. He sacrificed a lot in the early game, and he's been able to clean up with those, those two assists and... You know, those stack steals. So it looks like the jungle camp did go away, and I assume that was Chuan taking that because Shadowfiend was busy top. He's level 6 now, 3 in Sandstorm, 3 in Burrow. He's got 1,700 gold, and with this kill of this double stack large camp and the other double stack large camp, I think this guy's going to have a blink dagger, and then we're going to see a gank somewhere immediately afterwards. Yeah, Bone7 uh, will probably win the race for the blink dagger, but they'll come out at pretty comparable timings. We'll see if Bone7 can perhaps find a, a good lasso initiation. He gets level 6 off uh, this set of neutrals. So now Lasso is available. Luo up top, getting harassed by Eternal Envy. Will waveform back. Uh, that Soul Ring on the way, but still not quite there. Also closing in on level 7. So this is right around the time when your offlane Morphling will start moving around and look to set up kills in other lanes with that Adaptive Strike. And an interesting skill build on Morphling. He actually grabs two levels in his passive. Um, I've always felt like if you're playing the stunning build, you want to max your... Stun as early as possible, and you also want to get waveform to have some kind of damage. Because when you morph so heavily into strength, you have very little damage. But if you get a second level of morph here, it doubles the, the speed at which you can morph, which is a pretty cost-effective point in a lot of ways. So I've never looked at that ability, that uh, scaling before, and it's actually decent here. Yeah. So cool, cool valid reasons for him doing that. Curious when he'll grab that uh, ultimate. Sooner rather than later. Maybe just gets it at level Much eight. later. I mean, you can maybe take a Jug Illusion, that'd be good, but there's not a whole lot of Illusions that are strong in this game to teal, steal from somebody. Yeah, some of it is just the scouting potential, though. Yeah. They look for the Bat Rider. Hopefully it's an easy kill there. They do grab a level from one creep dying, but that's Ooh. gonna guarantee the Blink on Bone7. If they got there a little bit earlier, that could've been a Bone7 kill, could've delayed his Blink Dagger. So many Blink Daggers one coming out of your purge. Basically. One on the Radiant, two on the Dire. Fata will secure his. He rushes a Blink. Instead That's of good. Arcane Boots. Like uh, Sindarin pointed out, their early game is really weak. So if the Bat would have died there and delayed his Blink, it would have been completely up to, up to the Magnus to work out. But luckily, they both have Blinks now, and they can move around the map trying to get kills. And they need to do this, because if they don't get some kills soon, the game is going to go out of control. Like, if they don't counter the Sand King initiation that's likely to come, like, the game is just really tough. Phoenix isn't even 6 yet here. He's just trying to sap experience. Yeah. His line, first fight's big. Line's still not quite level 6, but with the Tranquil Boots, as you mentioned, he's still feeling pretty good. Shadow Fiend goes mech first, and we'll find it completed at the 10-minute mark. Not the Yule Scepter, but a sign that IG can get more aggressive here, and I think they'll do this 4 plus 1 that they love so much. More space for burning and try and take fights on other sides of the map. Speaking of burning, he gets that Tier 1 tower kill in the bottom lane, and the smoke from IG will be revealed as Big Daddy throws out a Fire Spirit. First gank attempt with this Blink Dagger on the Sand King will be thwarted. That's really important. Super important. They didn't even have to fight for it, so no chance of them losing that. AI Splash is going to be up soon. They attempted for a mid, but they missed it. Almost a grab on Faith, but he hexes. Oh, Firefly great. to the high ground. Great reaction from Faith there. So both teams' initiation didn't really work out, but if we look at the gold graph, it's a huge gold advantage for the Radiant. A lot of this is really coming from Burning. He's been completely uncontested, gets a free yeah. tower, and Envy's now moved into the jungle, still not really at that point where he can really farm super quickly. Burning perhaps looking to have a go down bottom with that Omni Slash, but Big Daddy will Icarus dive away. Yeah, Big Daddy has to be really careful here because he doesn't even have six yet. If he gets Omni, normally he can become invulnerable to that. He's even missing mana, so... We'll see the first rotation from Burning now as he just heads to the top lane. Mask of Madness online. He's ready to start pushing towers and find kills if possible. Misery in a good spot here, hiding in the tree line. Will they find him? Burning? Yep, they see him. Faith hits him with a stun. Adaptive to follow up. It's an easy pick off, and I guess that position not so good after all. Yeah, it's, it's a good spot for hiding, but unfortunately it gives slight vision in this line here. So I, I'm sure that Burning spotted him, and then the rest of the heroes noticed that he was there. So that was now a pretty Now this will be a free kill. tower kill, probably the second one for Burning. 
Yeah, that's so dangerous. Nope. He as misses well. it actually, but but still, tower it's down. Less space for them to farm. Oh, it's smoke mid broken by Luo. Connects with a stun onto Big Daddy. He'll wave for oh, the grab SF. But caught with the lasso is the follow up damage there. Icarus dive across. There is a supernova available. Big Daddy will use it. Mech comes out from Ferrari. Looks like he'll be able to survive the backside of the fight. Chuan coming in. Ice blast flying through. Faith. He does have a finger available, but holding it for now. Now Chuan in a bit of trouble, burning, joining the party. Omni Slash finds the first kill. Bat Rider for Sand King, but Chuan, he'll buy back straight away. Ancient Apparition now in the grave. Big Daddy, no Icarus dive. He's feeling the breath of Burning Sword, and it doesn't feel good. That'll be the end of him. Now Fata and Envy, the only two left alive. They'll hug their Tier 1 tower. They'll live, but a disastrous fight for Cloud9, even with the buyback from Chuan. Still a gold gain for IG. Yeah, seven to two at the moment. He's trying to hold the tower back, but it's pretty scary, especially with Morphling still alive here. He's stunning for 4.25 seconds. Whoa. RP comes through, Skira back. On two behind the tower, but Luo hits him with a stun, burning, just Blade Furies away. Luo will be okay for oh now. They'll try God. to turn this on to Fata. He's getting low, but they can't quite finish him off. Ice Blast comes in, connects only on Chuan. Oh. They find him in the tree line. He's isolated, hit by the shockwave. Firefly enough to finish him off as Bone Seven gets credit for that one. C9 get a small consolation for the hyper aggression of IG there. We're nice RP from Fata. Though. Yeah, that was good. It delayed the fight a little bit there. It, they didn't get a kill out of it, but the important part was that little dire creep that blocked Chuan, and he couldn't get out. The ice blast hit him. They saw he was there, and from there, Batrider jumping on top of him. Easy kill. A very good consolation kill that C9 has been looking for. And they defend the tower, cost them an RP and their other ultimates, but considering them being behind, I think that was all right. Yeah, and in this game, Bone 7 had a decent initiation onto the Shadow Fiend, but unfortunately the follow-up damage just wasn't there. They don't have that huge burst, uh, you know, a finger or something like that to bring down the, the lasso target easily. They had the Supernova follow-up, but the mech was just enough to keep Ferrari safe as they will continue to pressure these Tier 1s. Tier 1 in the mid for Cloud9. Radiant will fall. Looks like they won't be able to move in time to make it effects. So that tower will likely fall? Oh, uh, maybe not. Oh, wait, that's a Shadow Blade on Jug? Mm-hmm. Jeez, he's so farmed. To go with his Mask of Madness. Item you don't see too often, but when you're this far ahead, can really bode well. Fata gets class. hexed as he heads to the top lane, and he will get locked down on the other side of it. Batrider falls. It's a two for nil. And two separate fights. Now Burning gets another tower kill. IG getting so much momentum here, Purge. Look at this gold graph. Already a 5k net worth and XP deficit in favor of Invictus Gaming. They have so much good chase. Like, Batrider needs a, a four staff to be survivable here, but... There's just too much damage coming out. He can't get away. If he gets stunned, he stops pulling somebody. And Morphling isn't even the hero that you want to go on because his HP is so high because he's morphed so much over there. And it gets even worse if he continues to press the morph strength button. He can still get an extra 20 strength out of it. So a fast Roshan will be finished. Very unlikely. Well, we will see an AI splash that'll help if it hits Ferrari. It doesn't, though. And that's dead Roshan and another big advantage. I feel like Misery really hasn't been able to do as much on this hero. I mean, it did block... IG from picking their heroes, but because their heroes were so delayed in terms of roaming viability, it's like he's not being, he's not able to accomplish a whole lot. They don't have that many nukes either. AI Splash, you want to combo with nukes in most cases, but their team is weak on nukes and weak on early disables. Yeah, They'll so go well in the late game, but it's che tough. Checking in on Eternal Envy, he's been rather quiet this game. Now has the Empower buff to help farm a little bit more. Picked up the Yashiko with the Power Treads, so but still taking a little while to come online. And IG are just capitalizing so much on Terrorblade's relatively weak early stage here. Mid lane, Burrow Strike right onto Fata. That's a Requiem of Souls for a double kill onto Big Daddy and Magnus. Oh boy, it just keeps getting worse for Cloud9 here. Burning, finds Misery, Shadow Blade oh, with an Omni Slash to follow up. Make it three. That's just demoralizing right there. Three dead heroes are not having, are having a lot of trouble finding kills on the map, and man, kills like that just make it scarier and scarier. Especially, man, Ferrari on SF is so terrifying, because this guy doesn't die very often. Mm -hmm. And now he's got offensive with a Blink Dagger as well, so really good chance that he can cooperate in team fights, score kills for his team, and just push their advantage even farther. It's just looking really bad for C9. Yeah, I no. think this is looking bad, uh, more worse than the previous game versus IG did. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this this lead this early on, it's it's reached five figures, Purge. 10,000 net worth, 12,000 experience, and only 16 minutes of gameplay. It's not quite insurmountable, but yeah, fairly close. Ages of the Immortal on Shadow Fiend will be lasting uh, for a pretty long time here, so IG can continue to keep up this aggression and deny Cloud9 places to farm. We'll see IG start to invade the jungle and really limiting where Eternal Envy can find time to kill creeps. Spot some illusions here. Illusions versus illusions. They know one of these is real. But which one? 
C9 does have a lot of smokes ready to use. They just have to find the opportunities. Got to be careful with this Observer Ward, though. Put a sentry down, but AoE, that may... I don't see any pings. I don't think I they I think that was out of range. It was just in the darkness there. Midas on Morphling. He could actually just transition into a carry at some point, too, with this. And now Faith gets his Blink Dagger on the line. 17 minutes, pretty solid timing there. Plenty of farm to go around for IG. Even more initiation power now with a Blink Hex. It's a, a trio of Blink Daggers, and the Shadow Blade on burning, kind of half of a Blink Dagger in that sense. All right, so C9 was trying to find somebody, but they didn't catch anybody there. A bit unfortunate for them. They really need kills. Any kill they get at this point gives them a huge gold advantage, especially if they catch the heroes that have the higher net worth on IG, mm -hmm. especially Juggernaut or Shadow Fiend. Any of those guys would give them a huge boost in gold. But unfortunately, couldn't find anything. Big Daddy throws some Fire Spirits out onto Ferrari to try and delay this push in the mid lane, but the creep wave already cleared up. They've got a siege creep with them. IG will just continue to put the pressure on. They've got Faith in the bottom lane, but he'll join the party mid, and this will turn into a five-hero push. And Luo opting for pretty much a max strength build. He doesn't even, he's not even going for the efficient, I want some agility, some strength. He just wants as much HP as possible here. Mm -hmm. Ice Blast flying through. Will connect on two. Luo and 430. Glyph comes out to try and defend the tier two. Some illusions coming in, but this baby's going down. In the bottom lane, Bone 7 is cutting the lane. They might try to trade their tier two mid for a tier one bottom. But it could very quickly turn into a two tier twos for just this tier one in the bottom lane, which, like, needless to say, is far from ideal. Yeah, it's not a trade that you want to make at all. Flood is trying to pick up some farm as well to catch up, but they don't feel comfortable going under tower because you They're could have a TP with a blink strike from Sand King, and then you're caught, and then you have to take a bad fight. So what's Mantis the play for IG? Really Do they come back to defend? I, uh, they could grab a kill, but there's nobody around, so I guess they, they probably should just defend. You know what? I think what they should do is follow this blue line on the map, walk around that path, and maybe set up a kill. I think that sounds like a good idea. Sounds like a pretty good plan, Perch. Only one outer tower remaining for Cloud9 already. Only 19 minutes into this game. They've killed but a single tier 1 tower themselves. Fata now goes power treads uh, on his Magnus after the Blink Dagger. Opting to skip the Arcane Boots. Oh, Envy farming in the danger zone right now. Gets caught by Faith. The Blink Dagger's there. Stun follow up from Chuan. Do they have the damage? They do. It's a finger of death and a dead eternal envy. We almost saw Magnus get killed as well, but opted for the illusion instead. And Burning doesn't get the kill there. But grabbing eternal envy, I mean, he's one and two right now. He's got decent last hits, but his net worth, his net worth is okay, considering the scope I of the game. I think considering how this game is going, it's pretty solid. But there are still a lot of issues here for Cloud9. And they are not slowing down this IG momentum whatsoever. Aegis just about to expire, but I feel like 430 has gotten a lot of use out of it. They're going to find Fada, I think. Will we see the Hex yep. Burrow strike first? Oh, Here comes oh the Requiem. That's a one-hit KO for the most part. Fada heads straight to the grave. That's one of the really cool things about the draft that IG did here is that any stun and Ferrari can get his ultimate off because they're all very long duration. You've got Hex, 2.5 seconds, or Spike, 2.5. The Burrow strike is very similar, 2.17 seconds. So he just has faith in his teammates. He sees the heroes like they're going to land a stun. He blinks and ultimates right away. He doesn't have to get a Yules. He can just go blink alone and then transition straight to damage items if he so wishes. I, I think this is actually a good game to just skip Yules entirely. So, Very aggressive wards come down. Blink forward from Bone 7. They want burning. They'll catch him in the lasso. They That's might be able to bring him down here. Plenty of damage. Oh. But the Omni Slash goes off. The RNG is there to finish off the Bat Rider before he falls. Buys some time for his teammates to join the party as well. Big Daddy without the Supernova. Will secure a kill on the Lion. But now Chuan with an epicenter focuses Eternal Envy. He dies. A two for two trade. Not too bad for Cloud9 if they can get away without losing any more. And they'll find a pretty big net worth gain out of that. Compliments of the rubber band. The threat of the Sunder was there, but unfortunately for him, the stun came through with the epicenter and just a bit too much damage for I could kite him as well. So things are tough here. Uh, he has finally grabbed a level of reflection. It's a decent skill against Jug because it does the illusion can crit back on him. So in the late game, it might be worth getting some points into here, but man, it's a tough game. He's He's got to get a Scotty next, I think. He's got to get HP. He's got to get some agility items. But yeah. it's it's looking scary, man. The one outer tower remaining for Cloud9. G2A soon to be turned to rubble. They don't have a Glyph. Ice Blast will connect on two. Icarus Dive and Fire Spirits. But the Adaptive is there onto Big Daddy. Luo just going to walk forward and bully him out a little bit. He looks really like, doesn't care that much. Yeah, it looks like they will actually not HP. commit to the tower. Okay. 
Morphling can kind of do whatever he wants here, whenever his ultimate's up, at least. It's Full Manta, Manta style coming out for 430. And a Blink Dagger for Luo. Yeah, very standard on the Morphling build because if you're full strength, it pushes people very far. So a lot of times you stun somebody, it pushes them closer to their team. So it's a little better to Blink behind them, push them towards your team, and then waveform through him. So it's a pretty much a safe initiation. Your damage is still irrelevant. I mean, he hits for 33 right now because he's so strength morphed. But the important part is that with good teammates, if you're setting up stuns for 4.25 seconds, it should create a lot of space and have a lot of viability while still being hard to kill. So. Cloud9 will here. get some vision control back and yeah, clear out the plateau in their jungle with that sentry ward. Nicely done. Opens up some space in their jungle. Just trying to find somewhere for Envy to farm. Looks like we'll have a short pause here. Probably a tech issue going on with C9. I think most likely. Still a huge lead for IG. Hovering around 13,000 net worth, 15,000 XP. Looks like he had an issue with his headset here. And he is ready to go. Okay. Hopping back into the game. Hopefully with that... Small 10-second break. They have the same uh, energy that IG got from the restart in the previous series. Fingers mm -hmm. crossed. They're going to need it because they're really far behind. Uh, wow, look at Ancient Apparition. Bought a gem. Oh. It's, it's a fair buy. I mean, they're so far behind, they need to get map vision. To get map control, they can land the RP. They can get the Batrider lasso. I th yeah, that might have been spotted. Oh, it's really close. I think it might have been clear. We don't see pings coming out from IG. I don't even think they saw the Observer Ward up there because Misery ran on the right side of the lane. So, Schwan on the high broken. ground, breaks the smoke, Burrow strike down to the other side. Good positioning there, and he sees the ward come down. Can they grab Morphling is the question. That's such a hard kill. They don't have the burst damage. They would have to RP for it, and that's just not worth it this early on. Mm -hmm. There is a force staff up on the Bat Rider, though, so Bone7 can now start to isolate whoever he grabs in the lasso. A much-needed bout of item progression. Chuan has also picked up a gem of his own, so one on each side. And the battle for map vision continues. Except Lion has a Hex, an Earth Spike, and a Blink Dagger. AA is much more squishy here. I mean, if they lose this gem, it's, I feel, the beginning of the end because there's no way they can regain map control unless they buy sentries, but that's in a losing game that's oftentimes not very worth it. Yeah. IG walk into the Roche pit, and they see that he's respawned, but instead they just head straight to the lane. They don't want to take any undue risk here. Instead, they'd yeah. rather clear out this tower and make things a lot more difficult for Cloud9 in terms of contesting. Burning caught by the lasso, pulled deep into enemy territory, but the follow-up is there. Supernova comes out as the Requiem gets channeled. Batrider goes down first. Now Envy stunned up, fingered, and sent to the grave. It's a two for nil straight away. The Supernova goes off, but the damage is just not there. Big Daddy tries to Icarus dive away, but Chuan follows up with a stun. It's a one for three. Lion got picked off in the fray. Dastardly fight for Cloud9 as they lose their last outer tower. Luo played that fight so well. As soon as the thing started, he blinked to the, the back line, and he made sure the Magnus could not blink and counter-initiate. If there would have been an RP, that could have been significantly different, but he just stopped that from happening. Jumps in, throws the stun, starts attacking Magnus. That 30 damage completely Some buybacks off. are available here, Purge. Glyph has already come out. Are they going to be forced to burn them? You can't sacrifice barracks this early on. Phoenix will use his. Envy hanging on to his for now. Tier 3 tower does go down. Now IG just trying to make their retreat. Bone 7 caught by an adaptive. Do they have the follow-up damage? No. Took a hit from 30. Still took the Tier 3 tower, though. Great push from IG. And they also forced out a buyback on the Phoenix without conceding a death, so... That is just some lost gold for the bottom line of Big Daddy No-Tail. It's so tough to play this with, uh, with the Morphling being there. He's, like, unkillable in a lot of ways. He can stun one of your heroes for 4.25 seconds. C9 needs a good team fight, and they have the heroes for it, but it keeps disrupting team fights like that. It just looks so hard. They didn't lose their gem, at least. Misery was able to stay alive in that fight, but... I Did did Eternal Ebony go down? He's 1, 4, and 3 he now. Did. He died and did not use his buyback. Good. Faith has just been focusing him so hard. It seems like every fight, the Lion is looking for the stuns on the, the Terra Blade, and once he's in the threshold, that Finger of Death, I think it's been used on Envy almost every fight. It should be. It's, it's so good against him. He's only got 1,000 HP here on Agility Treads. Oh, Envy, he is in the danger zone right now. Can they find him? Lua walking by. Chuan opens up with the stun. Adaptive is there. Envy locked in place. He'll die once more. That makes him 1-5. in five. Really a rough game for this Terra Blade. No kidding. I mean, what do you do at this point? Juggernaut has 60% more net worth than you, but more importantly, he just wrecks you in a 1v1. I feel like even with Terra Blade, if he was able to metamorphosis, and Manta split and have two Chondra images up, I think Jug would still kill him in most cases. It's just so yep. much physical damage. Plus, he has a crit. 
Jug's damage in comparison is just massive. And now Jug has a Skull Basher, probably looking towards that Abyssal Blade before too long. More control to just lock down that Terra Blade, prevent him from Sundering or anything else. Roche goes down once more. That's an Aegis of the Immortal for 430 again. And he's got about 3,000 gold pulled up to look towards his next item, quite possibly a Scotty. So last Observer Ward is going to fall, at least uh, by the bot half. C9's looking to turtle. They're grabbing BKBs on their core heroes, but they're a bit too far away from them. Even Magnus going for a Yules. I think it's a good option. You can stop things like Epicenter, SF ulti, without needing a Blink Dagger. And they're preparing to go high ground. They want to take a Rex. They know there isn't a Glyph available here, so this is a good time for IG to push with the Aegis advantage, plus knowing that the Phoenix buyback is on cooldown. They've got their ultimates at least, so they can get something out of this. Ferrari walks up to the high ground. Illusion Rune in the bottle. We'll focus the ranged barracks for now, looking for the sure damage. IG playing this very cautiously, putting their Aegis Carrier in the front lines. They don't want to overcommit here. Trying to bait with Ferrari and see if they'll waste one of their prized ultimates on him. I think IG happy to not fight here if it means they can secure uncontested barracks, and they will. Now do they back out or go mid? Seems to be the latter here, Purge. They want to end this game. They're going to keep going, definitely. There's no point to back off. Nothing got used, and they have a huge gold advantage. I don't think they're... They're not like, oh, we got a small advantage. Let's let's keep pushing this. They have a huge advantage. 25k net worth and experience to be yeah, exact. They're going to try to take the game here. If the second Rax falls, that's at the very least a long, painful death for C9. So they have to fight here. And it's all, all going right. to be down to RP. They don't have the trees to hide them this time, though. And Cloud everybody's still trying to out. split. Lasso onto Luo. Is the follow up damage there? He's the tankiest target. They can't quite bring him down. Wave form away. He'll survive for now on the other side of the fight. Chuan, or pardon me, Faith brings down the Phoenix. They kill the Morphling. He'll buy back. Ice They've already coming. taken the tier 3 tower, though. Still not too bad for IG. They know Phoenix can't buy back here, and he, does, he did have the Supernova. Did he get chain stunned? Oh, with Finger of Death. Okay. He did. He got fingered, yeah. So now the barracks are exposed. Still no glyph available. Melee's Morphling low. had that tier 1 tower to TP to, so he's already back in this fight. Envy buys a BKB. They need to make a stand here. Melee Barracks taking a lot of damage. Fata still has the RP, but IG just split up so well. Fata stunned as soon as he blinks in. Gets follow-up stun. Bursted from full to zero before he can cast a single spell. Now Envy with the BKB on. Will Great get thunder. off a Sunder, but does it matter? I say nay. He's stuck in the well, and this could be the end for Cloud9 G2A here. A buyback comes out from Fata, but they blow up Bone7, and it's GG. IG head to the finals to face off against VG Game. What a comeback there. They were on the verge of defeat in game two, but they eked out the advantage, took game two, and just stomped game three. I really felt like they're, they're drafting there, just focused on all the important heroes. First, they banned on Fada's ideal heroes with both the Zeus and the Beastmaster, forced him into picking a Magnus because he was worried about turning into the last game with a hero that he's not as comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And then they also got rid of all of the really good heroes that Eternal Envy may have wanted to play, forced him into a Terra Blade, and a couple early rotations on that hero is like, what do you do against it? He wasn't able to kill the Morphling. He couldn't get hero advantage. All he could do is hit creeps and all. And he did that, but too many stuns, too many good teamfight abilities, and IG knocks them out third place for C9. Yeah, not a bad finish for Cloud9, but uh, certainly not what they were hoping for. I can't help but feel like the Terra Blade was just not the pick that game. We talked about it in the draft. Our panel talked about it. Uh, just so much control, so much burst damage, and it seemed like the offlane Morphling was really quite... Uh, Quite the pick this game. 0-1-9, and nine, but he set up a lot of kills. And, and it wasn't just that. I feel like they also didn't really want to do AA. I think they maybe picked too many heroes that they wanted to prevent IG from having rather than just playing heroes they were good at. I mm -hmm. feel like Misery always does a lot better on heroes like Lion. He plays amazing on those. Right. They still got Phoenix, but that was pretty much the only hero in the draft that they really play often is Phoenix and Batrider. Those are the two yeah. heroes they got. Everything else was like second or third tier picks that they normally grab. I feel like they had too many heroes that were out of their comfort zones. Yeah, I also really liked the, the slightly slight variation from Burning there. He went for that Shadow Blade very early on, an item you don't see on Jug too often, but when you're